Welcome to the second part of the basis of molecular dynamic simulation. In the first part, we have seen uh, the idea behind molecular dynamic simulation, the, equation, the equ Newton equation of motion, that is a, a second order partial difference equation, and it needs to be solved numerically. And one way to solve it is to use a simple algorithm to integrate, to integrate it in a small time step. And then the idea behind the principle behind the molecular models. Now we go further to see what are the other aspects that government molecular dynamics simulation. So we will see the role of the time step the boundary condition and the treatment of the temperature and pressure in the first part. So shall we say that a simulation condition and in the second part, we will look more on uh, the how we set the environment and on the starting configuration. So the time step, the time step determine how much time can be simulated. So you, you can, what is computational cost is the step, since uh, we integrate the Newton equation in small step. So it's longer the step, at the end we can simulate a longer time. So in this sense, uh, the smaller the time step is, uh, the more expensive is the calculation. Indeed, if I have to run to perform a hundred nanosecond is different if I do it in a step of two femtoseconds or if I do a step of ten femtoseconds. So the first field is uh, the sorry the time step is closely related to the force field and to how you describe your model. As we say it's always a, a small time step is always working. But when it's too small, nothing happens, and it takes too long time before an event occurs. And that is not what usually we want, since we have always the problem that we don't simulate long enough. If it's too large, it causes instability. And then it cannot occur, occur immediately, but it can occur in whatever moment, moment during your simulation. For this reason, when you choose a molecul uh, molecular model, you have to pay attention how this molecular model is set and how the time step is set for this molecular model. Not all the force field, for example, has the same, use the same time step. When we have an appropriate time step, we can describe with a reasonable compromise of time and uh, simulation time, the events in our system. Another aspect, so no, uh, usually in atomistic, usually in an atomistic description, when we constrain the bonds, uh, we use a two femtosecond time step. But it's always good to check when you choose uh, a molecular model which is the time step used, for example, during the parametrization procedure. So, as you can see, there is a strict relation on the shape of the potential and the time step that can be used. When we have a narrow potential, usually we need a very small time step. When we have a shallow potential, the time step can be larger. And that is the reason, because on average, when we use constrained model that have a shallow, a shallower potential than a, a automistic model, we we usually use larger time step. And that say again, and here is, I repeat again that uh, there is a strict relation between the molecular model that you use and the time step that uh, you have to use with that molecular model. There are different way that can be used to increase the time step. And one I was mentioned already is uh, uh, to apply 
constraint to your bond. There are different constraint algorithms, example are links, parallel links, or shake. And uh, usually the time step is correlated to the fast motion, and the fast motion is correlated to low mass. So, for example, it's uh, very frequent to put a constraint on the bond involving hydrogen atoms. Another way it's also to use virtual side change. So also here, if we look on the fastest motion, this will involve the hydrogen, but not only the vibration of the bond, but also the angle and the torsion. In particular, for example, for the methyl group of the amine, amine group. So the use of this virtual interaction site allowed us to remove this fast motion and in this way to increase the time step. How it works? So for example here you see in uh, gold the position of the virtual side and so the force is calculated on the atoms of your system then is redistributed to the virtual side then the Newton equation is integrated and then from the virtual side, we reconstruct the position of the original atoms. There are also other approaches that can be used to increase the time step. One is also to play on the mass of the atom, to make light atom more heavy. But in this way, we affect the dynamics also of the system. Then we go more in detail in the simulation condition. So usually we want to simulate, we simulate one molecule, but uh, we want, uh, and this molecule is mimic a molecule that is, uh, is, in an, is together with more molecule in, for example, in a cuvert. So if we look uh, the baker of an experiment, there are very few molecules that are in contact with the border of the baker. And that is the same that we would like in our simulation, even if we simulate one molecule. And for this way, we implement a boundary condition and most of the simulation are run in boundary condition. What, how this work? So we have a, a simulation box that is in red, that is our simulation box. Then this simulation box is replicated in all the direction, x, y, and z. That means that it's surrounded by around 26 other box that are just image of the original box. That means that when one particle is going out on this side of the box, it's just coming in on the other side. This is a, so, and this is how we do to avoid to have boundary in our system. We have to define our box. We usually put our molecule inside the box. And the standard idea is that, that this box is cubic or rectangular. But as we saw before, we have a problem in calculating all the non-bonded interaction, in particular the solvent. So the calculation of the non-bonded interaction, if you think your box is full of water, is computational heavy makes and make our simulation slower. So one option is to try to build the box in a way that is that is optimized the volume around the macromolecule. Usually the macromolecule has a global shape, so probably a spherical description is more suitable. So we have been developed different shape of uh, molecule of box that are try that are optimize the volume. For example, for uh, membrane simulation, hexagonal box can be a good option since we have uh, we just have the eighty five percent of the volume of a cubic corresponding cubic box. For a standard global protein, maybe one can think about it 
truncated or decayed flux, and that is uh, uh, approximately 77 percent of the cube, or better, orthorhombic or decayed flux. That is almost a spherical, looks like a sphere. That is resembles the 71 percent of a cubic box. In this case, since in the edge, as you can see, in the, of the box, you mainly have only solvent, make everything around will make us save interaction that will save time, so we have to calculate less interaction, non-bonded interaction, without losing uh, description of our system. That is also what is Another condition that we can design, define is the thermodynamic ensemble in which we want to run. There are different thermodynamic ensembles. There is a MV ensemble, so constant number of particles, constant volume, and constant energy, total energy. That is an ensemble that we use mainly in the physical, simu physical simulation but not so much in uh, biophysics and biochemistry. Biophysics and biochemistry experimented on and then as a consequence simulation are mainly in perform a canonical ensemble like uh, constant number of particles, constant volume, constant temperature, or uh, and at a constant number of particles, constant pressure, constant temperature, what is called MPT ensemble. So these are the two conditions where mainly experiments are run. And as a consequence, since uh, uh, simulation usually are run in parallel with experiment, or they have to compensate uh, the lack of information of the experiment, we also are interested to simulate in this condition. That requires that we need some approach how to couple the temperature and the pressure of our system. And so now we will see how we can calculate temperature and pressure in MD, but what is the way in which we can couple the temperature and the pressure. So the temperature in the molecular dynamic simulation is calculated from the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is given by the mass of each particle the velocity square of each particle over two. And then for the co-partition theorem, we know that this is equal to the number of degree of freedom of the system. And the number of degree of freedom of the system is equal to the number of particle of the system multiplied by three minus the number of constraint of the system. Then we have uh, Kb, that it is the constant, Boltzmann constant, and then the temperature divided by two. So if we know the kinetic energy, we know the degree of freedom, we know the Boltzmann constant, we can extract the temperature of the system. So the temperature of my system can be in some way controlled by modifying the velocity of the particle. If I modify the velocity, I have a different temperature. So usually, the algorithm that we use to control the temperature, we call it thermostat. And the role of the thermostat is to, to provide us, uh, to ensure that the correct average temperature of the system and that the fluctuation of the temperature are of the correct size. There are several thermostats. So one of the original thermostat, that was the oldest one, developed in 91, is the Barents wick coupling thermostat. It's very efficient in relaxing a system to the target temperature. So the relaxation of the temperature is going in an exponential way, but uh, it does not reproduce the correct fluctuation of the kinetic energy and as a consequence of the temperature. So then it doesn't resemble a, a good canonical ensemble. In 2007, Bussi developed another algorithm, velocity scale temperature coupling. That is an algorithm that is based on Behrens in thermostat, but has an additional stochastic term. And these ensure a, connected, a correct distribution of the kinetic energy. 
So now we have a thermostat that uh, provides not only the correct average temperature, but also a correct fluctuation of the temperature. Then we have another thermostat that provides also a correct uh, canonical ensemble, and that is nose over temperature coupling. This is the philosophy behind this uh, algorithm is different. The thermostat is different. Uh, here, a thermal reservoir and a friction term is added to the system Hamiltonian. That was the peculiarity of this uh, thermostat is that it's relaxed in an oscillatory way, the temperature. So if we are very far away, from the target temperature, that might be a problem. So it's not used in an equilibration phase. Then we go to see how we calculate the pressure in molecular dynamic simulation. The pressure is related to the volume of the system and to the interaction between the particles. So if we can see, it's calculated with, from a first part where we have a degree of freedom, Boltzmann constant temperature divided over the volume, and this part is resemble as the kinetic energy. So actually is uh, twice the kinetic energy, and then we divide for the volume, D is the volume from our box. Then we have a second term, and this second term is the virial, and that describes the contribution due to the force between the particle. And this can be easily calculated in MD when we calculate the force in the phase where we calculate the force. So from this, we can extract that the pressure can be controlled by varying the volume of the system and scaling the position of the atoms of the molecule. So when we couple the pressure, we speak about barostat. We have different way to couple the pressure. We can couple it in an isotropic way. So it means that we couple in the same way along x, y, and z. Or we can couple in same isotropic way. So we couple in the same way in x and y, but in a different way in z. Or we can couple in a completely anisotropic way. There is also an option that to couple not the pressure, but the surface tension. So here again, I, I go through some example of barostat, and as also was uh, the case for the bar thermostat before, is I don't cover all the barostat and all the thermostat. So, the, so here also, not the oldest, but one of the oldest uh, thermostat, barostat is the Berenson and that the scale, the coordinate, and the box vector every, every step. And uh, that has also the same problem that is uh, reproducing correct the, the average pressure, but it provides a wrong fluctuation of the value of the pressure. So an alternative, a good alternative that was coming out very recent in 2020, Fabernetti and Bussi, is stochastic cell rescaling. This algorithm is very similar to the Berenson algorithm, but a stochastic term is added, and that allows the good reproduction of the fluctuation. Then another alternative is, the Camp is Campanello Rama, and uh, this thermostat works somehow like uh, Nose Hoover temporal coupling, so I add the term to the Hamiltonian. And also in this case, the relaxation of the pressure is go in an oscillatory way. That my cause is that the system is very far away from, uh, uh, from the reference pressure, strange oscillatory behavior in the box. So now we go further with more, so we saw the pressure and the temperature, how they calculate, and we go further with other information on how the system setting. So we saw the condition, so with the boundary condition, how the temperature, the pressure, and now we go to see how we set the system. Molecules are always in a condensed phase, 
and uh, they are in an environment that is or the cellular environment or an environment that try to mimic the cellular environment to be so close possible to the cellular environment. So that is also what we would like in the simulation. So when we are simulating a membrane protein, we set it in a membrane. We would like that the composition of the membrane, the lipid composition of the membrane, resemble as much as possible the lipid composition of the original membrane. We will set this, the protein in, in solution. And usually we want to have a ionic strength so close as so possible to the experimental one. If it's a protein, for example, in seawater, where we have a 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.6 uh, ionic strands, 0 0.6 smaller ionic strands, we want to have the same type of ionic strands. So we usually add to our macromolecule a solvent, ion, and other type of molecule that are present in the sperm. Another, then we enter is another problem when we set the system that we need the macromolecule or the molecule that we are interested. So we need to have original coordinate. This can come from an experimental structure that can be an X-ray structure, an NMR structure, cryo and structure. Or it can also be a structure that is built using, for example, homogeneous modeling, docking approach, also some other geometrical criteria, for example, that are usually used, for example, to build DNA or RNA molecule. For solvent, we also need a starting structure for the solvent. So usually for the solvent, we need to build a solvent box, relax, equilibrate, and then we can use this solvent box to solvate our macromolecule. This, there, is, there are databases where we can find that this is one of the databases, the protein data bank, where we can download PDB structures, so structural file with the position of all the atoms of our macromolecule. And that we can use as a starting point, for example, and then is what we will do in the tutorial later. There are, can be several types of issues. So not always when we have a deposit structure in the protein data bank, all the position of all the atoms are resolved. Some atoms might be mixing, or some atoms might be some atoms might be just model. So that means that behind the experimental structure there is already a simulation going on, but we don't know. So one has always to check the experimental structure and usually to understand which are the really the raw data that come from the experiment and which are the part that has been modeled to make better the refinement, for example. We, it sometimes it happens that a very key flexible loop may be missing, missing, so we have to think about how we want to implement it. We can use software like Modeler to model it and then we have also to think about to relax. Also another issue with, with uh, uh, or, uh, experimental structure may be the position of the hydrogen. Hydrogen are not always available experimentally. And, uh, or they may, might be available, but they are specific of the condition of that experiment. And that might not be exactly the condition that you have in your simulation. So that is always to think about. And if, for example, uh, a PK shift can occur that uh, this might be frequent uh, in, uh, in the pocket of a box. So it might be the protonation states of the residue in that pocket might be affected by the present or not of the ligand. It could be that uh, different tautomeric states occur. And tautomerism is very difficult to detect with almost any experimental technique. The only technique that provides us some information about tautomerism is NMR. Then in an X-ray structure, in a, mainly an X-ray structure, we might have the position of other things like water, for example, but it's very hard to know if those are water or are magnesium ion because it's almost 
very difficult to distinguish or sometimes the criteria used to distinguish them is just based on the fact if one can form or not hydrogen bond. But the questions are all relevant at those water, are just due there to the crystallization procedure or are key water that play a role in the function of the molecule. Also in the experimental structure, to get the structure, we might have other extra molecules, cofactor, ligand, sulfatan, or they can be performing a special condition that has to promote to see the experimental structure, but not necessarily will correspond to your condition. So when you take a structure, you have to think all of this, and also when you interpret your results, you have to have an overview of this. And uh, then we have our structure. We are happy with our structure, so we have, it means that we have the position of all the atom in a file. And uh, probably when we want to start the simulation, our system will also have a temperature. So if we start uh, like it is, it means that we start at temperature equal zero. This is one option. Or the other option is to assign uh, randomly the velocity such a way that uh, the distribution of this velocity reproduce the, des uh, the desired temperature. One way, for example, is that the velocity are taken from the random Maxwell distribution with a kinetic energy corresponding to the design temperature, since we know that there is a relation between the kinetic energy and the temperature. So now we have seen in the second part the time step, we have seen the condition, simulation condition with boundary condition and the temperature pressure. Then we have seen how we set our starting structure, the ion, the problem of the selection of the starting structure. Now in this last part of my presentation, I want just to speak about a molecular simulation connected specific with Chromax, that is the software that we will use in this summer school. As I told you, so when we start from our structure that it can be modeled or take from a database, so we have, all, we have already a priori choose the, how we want to describe the degree of freedom. For example, here we already decide to describe it in an atomistic way. Then we have download our structure. Probably it's a good procedure to visualize it to check if uh, we miss something, if uh, that is looks fine, according to what we know. We probably have had already all the missing atom. Then we have to choose the force field to describe it. Since we are atomistic, we will choose one of the force field. We also have to define solvent and the ions, so the environment that will be. Then we have, uh, in case we have some strange component that are not already present in the force field, we have probably to generate a mini, a, or implement a missing parameter, and this should be in line with the force field definition. And then we have to define in which condition, which temperature pressure we want to run, how long we want to run. And then we have this, our starting simulation, uh, starting structure, and we can start to simulate how this is described in terms of Gromax, so we can see which are the topology file that we have when we, we use Gromax. We have a specific, we have, topo, uh, we have file that describe the structure, file that describe the simulation parameter, and file that describe the topology of the system. So usually when you get the structure from the database, for a PDB data bank, you can run a tools that provide you, if this structure is one of the standard macromolecules, it will provide you a topology file. You have two options to choose which protonation states, to have some control on the tautomeric states, to the protonation states, to the termini, and other small things. And this, so in this way, you have generate your topology file. Then you have this, you have still your structure, but your structure probably is is not in solution, 
and you want to get to your structure as a, s a structure and solution. So you will probably have to put your structure in a box. You have to solvate it. You have to add the ion. So to put the correct environment in your box, all the molecules that are required to describe the environment should be in the box. And this we will end up in a structural file that can be in a grow form and in a PDB form, but they contain the coordinate of all the atoms of your system. Then you will proceed to have to define a, a file that is called MDP file, simulation parameter file, where we have all the setting of our simulation, how long we will simulate, which condition, pressure and temperature, for example, boundary condition, all the setting of our simulation. And now we are almost ready. So we have uh, our structure file, we have our simulation parameter file, we have a file that describes the topology of our system, then we need the tools that put all this information together and create a new file that contain all the input information. Then this uh, file will be processed by a tool called MDRAM and it will provide a series of output, a trajectory where according to the criteria that we have, we have saved all different time point of our system, a file containing that contains all energy information and a log file. So up to, this is how we perform a simulation, how we have to set the simulation. Usually when we start from, from the beginning, we have different step in this simulation. Usually when we start from, we start from a, a molecule from the database, we have a first step where we energy minimize. So we relax the molecule in the potential, uh, in the potential that we have used, in the, that we have used to describe the model. So we have a first phase of energy minimization. Then we have also a second phase where we will uh, relax the position of the solvent and ion around the macromolecule. Then we will equilibrate the whole system and we will move to a data production. And the data production will provide us an example of conformation that from which we can extract different type of property that can be thermodynamic property, structural property, kinetic property, dynamic property, mechanical property. So we can extract different type of property. And we can see that in each of these steps, before going to the data production, we, we use a different type of MDP parameter. When you finish your simulation and then you are performing analysis, one other thing that always I say and I think is very important is to visualize your trajectory. There are different visualization tools. Here I list some of them, but it's very important that you visualize your trajectory because by looking what happens to the atom, you might discover things different than what you thought you want to analyze. It might also help you to set and calibrate better your analysis. With this, so after visualization of our pro molecule, I thank you for your attention. I, and I see you in a Q&A section where I hope to get a lot of questions. Any curiosity, any things that you didn't understand completely, please ask. In the future, after this summer school, if you still have questions on particular on Gromax, please go to the forum and ask or look. Maybe someone else asked already what you, have, you are interested in and there is already the answer. Thank you very much.